Yes, sir. Yeah. Interference. So under this topic, we have to first, uh, you know, make our base first. So interference is a very simple phenomenon. But in order to understand interference, we need to understand something more about the uh, wave, especially in case of light. Okay. So let me define interference first. What is interference? Okay. So it is a phenomena of Okay, I think that is problem. Phenomena of the three gets typed automatically. So what I can do? So it is a phenomena of uh, super. Okay, I think I have to just use another keyword. So when two waves superimpose with each other to produce interference, then the resultant intensity differs from the sum of intensities of the two waves. So the mathematically what you can say is Mathematically, we say if the I resultant, we can say I is <coughs> I one. Oh, I'll add it. I, okay, I'll add it here. <coughs> so the rule is simple: if if the resultant intensity of the two wave at any point is not equals to the sum. So let's say there are two sorts of energy. One is giving you, uh, <clears throat> so let's say 10 joule per second per meter squared. Other is giving you 20 joule per second per meter squared. So if both are arriving at a point, <coughs> then you're supposed to receive how much energy per, sec <coughs> per second per meter squared. So the answer is 30, right? That's a normal uh, event. Okay. Yes. When there is an interference, then you will not get 30. That's it. So you may get more than 30, you may get uh, less than 30, but not 30. So when you're not getting 30, when you're not getting the sum, then some sort of a redistribution has taken place. <laughs> so it is basically a, a consequence of conservation of energy. Let's say, uh, 
if someone is you know throwing uh, a bundle of 100 rupee note and someone is throwing a bundle of 50 rupees note and if <clears throat> everything is extremely random if everything is random then we can say that uh, the note will fall on the ground and every 100 note must have the every 50 rupee note over it or below it isn't it <laughs> now if there is if there is no interference then the floor will be spread out uniformly with all 100 rupees and 50 rupees over each other right if everything is random so this is called not interference this is not the interference because nothing has happened <clears throat> beyond expectation okay now let's say there is a wind and the wind is in a different direction okay so if i take the 100 rupee note as heavier one and uh, 50 rupee note as lighter one in weight so wind or you can say size if the size is different for the two notes then <coughs> a wind will blow uh, may blow these notes differently so on the floor you will see a different distribution of money isn't it yes so the wind has brought the, you know, it has interfered with the distribution. That's what we call interference. It has interfered with the distribution. The distribution was supposed to be different, but because of this uh, <coughs> wind, the distribution got changed. And now we have a new distribution of the note on the floor. Similarly, if we have two source of light <coughs> and if uh, they are arriving at a the point, then the two source, if interfere, then the way they were supposed to bring the energy at that point will change. Actually, it will redistribute the energy. So it may take up its neighbor's energy and can show you more energy than actual. So let's say 10 and 30 is coming and you're getting uh, 60. So what is happening is 10 and 30 is coming from one source and then the neighbors are also having 10 and 30. So you snatch all those money, you put at one place. So you get a accumulation of money at that place. You get more energy at that place. So what will happen by default? If you take more energy, then someone will lose, isn't it? Because energy is conserved. So if someone will get more energy, then someone will lose the energy. So the place where we have more energy, the surrounding, the immediate neighbors will have less energy because you have taken that energy. And that's how we create something called the brighter reason and the dull reason. Okay. So the light intensity on a surface will not be uniform, rather it will be in a, <clears throat> it will have some pattern, a brighter pattern, a dull pattern or dark pattern. So the darkness is the proof that energy that it was supposed to receive is taken by another reason, which is now called the brighter reason. Okay. So we get a, you know, kind of patches of bright reason and dark reason <laughs> and the intensity will vary continuously from the brighter region to the dark region it will fall down to the darkness then it will rise up to brightness fall down to darkness rise up to uh, <laughs> brightness and so on and that is why we are calling this event as interference so interference is basically a redistribution of energy phenomena but the similar pattern is also found in something called diffraction so even in diffraction the similar event happens so in order to distinguish these two events, the, there is some mathematical <coughs> differences. So we explain things only mathematically. So the terms are same. Diffraction and interference are similar event in nature. <coughs> but uh, they are very fine differences, uh, which is mostly mathematical, not in terms of uh, nature. So it is also redistribution. That is also redistribution. In interference, the redistribution can have a nice, well-defined pattern, or you can say <clears throat> a repetitive pattern. In diffraction, the problem is we do have a pattern, but that is not repetitive. It is like a, a variable pattern, a pattern which is not consistent. Okay. So this consistency of a pattern and they say inconsistency of pattern gives rise to the two name in physics, diffraction and interference but essentially all are superposition of wave so the most fundamental thing is called superposition but under certain mathematical condition we name it differently so we call under certain mathematical condition we call it interference we call it diffraction we call it something else so we are we are supposed to learn those mathematical practices that we have to you know uh, remember that this kind of mathematical 
practice, we name it interference. Okay. So in interference, this is what will happen. Okay. So you will have some, uh, you will have two sources. Uh, you may have more than two sources, but uh, when we talk about a, a large number of source, uh, then it becomes diffraction grating. Uh, in interference, especially we stick to two source interference. Okay. So our syllabus is mostly about two source interference. It is, but not restricted to two source. So it can have any number of source. It can be three source interference. It can be four source. It can be n source interference. So interference can be of a, uh, by virtue of any number of source. Uh, generally, we take two source interference. Uh, why we do so? Because it is mathematically convenient. I mean, there is no reason for it. Okay. I mean, uh, there is no restriction for it as well. Okay. So our syllabus, 99% uh, syllabus will deal with two source uh, interference. That's it. So what is the mathematical condition? Okay. So let me talk about the condition for. Sustainable interference. Because interference is a visual event. So it is the human eye which will give you the feeling of interference. So when we see it, we get some pattern to see. And that's why interference, when we say we talk about the sustainable interference, the interference which can be observed. But it doesn't mean that interference, every interference in the nature can be observed. Interference is happening in nature <laughs> at a very small scale also. But every interference is not observable. Okay. So for example, <clears throat> Let's say uh, there is a child whose parents are very uh, abusive. I mean, they hit the child all the time. Okay. So now you know that the parent is abusive. Now there is a parent who is very loving. Okay. They care about their parent. I mean, it's uh, way too more than uh, required. So that's like too much loving parent. Okay. Now comes the, the gray parent, a parent who, you know, sometimes become very restrict, sometimes very uh, caring. So they keep on, you know, hitting you at times. They will keep on loving at times. So you will be confused at uh, which kind of parent are they, are they. Okay. So do they love you? Do they hate you? I mean, now you're confused state. So when we have the confused state, we don't call interference. Interference means the event must sustain forever. So if someone is loving, they should keep on loving forever. If someone is hating, they should keep on hating forever. If this is happening, it means it is properly <coughs> sustained interference. So now if I convert this into uh, interference of light, because interference is a phenomenon of superposition of wave, but a wave can be anything. Right? Wave can be electromagnetic and wave can be longitudinal also or mechanical also. So interference happens for wave, which can be of any type. Need not to be just, a, uh, you can say, light only. Interference is for sound also. Interference is for light also. Interference is for ultraviolet light also. Interference is for the infrared also. So every component of light can have interference. Every spectrum of light can have interference. And uh, sound can also have interference. We are talking particularly about the, the light and the, when I say light, light means it is a visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. So when I say word light, then I talk about that part of a spectrum, which is giving you sense of vision. So we talk about the visible part of light. And uh, <clears throat> here we are going to talk about the interference of light. And we are not trying to understand what is the condition under which we can have sustainable interference or sustained interference. Which means the interference pattern will exist in the same fashion forever. That is called sustainable. Do you understand this? What I'm saying? Yes. So, <clears throat> so sustain means if we have two source of light, let's call S one. 
S2, and this is a point P. So light will travel as a, a wave reaching at the point P. Light will travel as a wave reaching the point P again. So <clears throat> it is quite possible that the light is reaching at the point P with its crest from the first source. And it is also possible that from the second source, it is also reaching in terms of crest. So <coughs> they are coming at a point P in phase. In phase means the way you vary at point P is similar to the way the other wave is varying at point P. Now, there are many situations. It could be varying exactly in a similar way. So, when they vary exactly in the similar way, we call <coughs> constructive interference. Why? Because if you add the wave, so both will become maximum. So, crest will add with crest, trough will add with crest, crest will crest. So, they remain in phase. It means they will have similar direction, right? So, when, we, when I say... <coughs> superposition of em wave then we talk about the amplitude of electric field basically so a light is basically oscillating electric and magnetic field so here interference of light means interference of the electric field actually and uh, these are the arrows are representing the electric field so both arrow always if the both source will give you arrow in the same direction of amplitude e naught and e naught what is the net amplitude at this point the summation of it yeah it is simply the summation of it which is two e naught yes <clears throat> now the idea is the way it is arriving at a point p if that way is maintained throughout it means it is sustained it means <clears throat> every time the crest of first will arrive at point p the crest of other second s2 will also arrive at point p when trough will arrive then trough will arrive when in something in between will arrive. So any point on the wave arriving at the point P. So if I talk about this point of the first wave, then second wave will also have this point. So they are undergoing addition all the time <clears throat> because they are having same direction. So whatever be the magnitude, they will have same value. And because they will have same value, so that addition of the two vectors will always in the same direction so it is like a simple algebraic addition isn't it <laughs> now it is also possible that uh, the first wave arriving is this way and second wave is arriving <coughs> this way it means they are exactly opposite direction all the time exactly opposite so when E naught will reach from here, then this will also become E naught, assuming both are identical source. In this case, what will be the resultant value? Zero. So when this will happen, we call destructive interference. So the first is called constructive. And this is called destructive. <laughs> which means the point P is not receiving any energy because the two waves are cancelling each other. So that energy is not coming there, which is also the meaning is that energy is taken by its neighbor. Actually, you can think that way also. Now it is also possible that we can take a generalized condition. Okay. The first wave coming is this way and second wave is coming is this way. How it is? So can I just come back here? Yeah.
Yes. Okay. Now, apart from these two extreme conditions, we can also have a condition that the wave arriving at the point P is neither exactly same direction nor exactly opposite direction, but in between, somewhere in between. And this is called when they have some phase difference, which is which is neither zero or nor one eighty. So this is called a phase difference is how much zero or <clears throat> two pi or 4 pi or 2 and pi. And this is called phase differences pi or 3 pi or odd multiple of pi. So <clears throat> we can also have a middle situation when the phase difference is something in between. So it is between 0 to pi, some in general value. So we can have a wave arriving at the point P in this fashion. Now the question is, what is the meaning of sustain? Sustain means this event of arriving at the point P should not change with time, which means the phase difference between the two wave at arriving at a point P must be <coughs> independent of time actually. It means whatever be the time, whatever be the position in space, the way wave is arriving at that location, that wave from the two source should not change in time. And that is only possible when the two source must have same frequency. <laughs> Are you getting my point what I'm saying? So the phase difference between the two wave arriving at the point P must be constant with time. And that is only possible when they have same frequency because if they have different frequency, if they have different frequency, then the phase relationship will vary with time. Do you realize what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So like, sir, the two waves must be identical. Yeah. So let's say a person is, a person is, you know, uh, being served on a plate. Okay. So you, let's say someone is serving your, your favorite food. So generally this happens, uh, you know, when you go to the Pani Puri stall. Okay, so have you taken Pani Puri ever? Yes, sir. No. Okay, you have taken Golgappa, you know, Golgappa, Pani Puri, whatever. Have you seen that? Yes, sir, the small puri with some potato filling. Yeah, and correct, 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 correct. So imagine if that guy is serving in your plate at a rate which is more than the rate at which you consume it. So the plate will be encroached by the Golgappa Pani Puri, right? Yes. So your frequency of eating and his frequency of serving, if it will not match, then the Pani Puri will vary on a plate. It will be different value. Yes. So similar to that, <clears throat> if two sources serving a point P, with a different frequency, then we cannot relate. We cannot, you know, predict that which uh, phase of wave will arrive at the point P at a given time T because it will keep on changing. It's a variable, and in such scenario, when things are variable, <coughs> we never get the sustainable interference. We get a variable interference, and human eye because light is a high frequency uh, frequency you can say spectrum or wave. At that high frequency, which is in, uh, uh, you can say, uh, terahertz or something like this, at that high frequency, the problem is the interference will happen so quickly and so rapidly that you will, in the duration for which we make some observation, the brain can perceive some observation, in that duration, Trillions and trillions of interference will happen 
and those interference may be of constructive nature and destructive nature. So human brain <coughs> perceives something as the average event, which means our brain will receive infinite information, infinite signal, infinite events. So it will collect all the events for roughly 0.1 second and it will give you the average perception which happened during 0.1 second. So if something is happening for 0.1 second, let's say within 0.1 second, we have uh, trillions and trillions of uh, constructive interference and trillions and trillions of destructive interference because both interference is happening in the same time of observation that our brain takes to create a perception. So we never respond instantly. We first take information for some time. Now, because the time is very small to our scale of thinking, but it is very large for the scale at which brain works. So in that duration, a large interference has occurred of all types of interference, constructive and destructive. The brain will say <laughs> there is no interference. Why? Until the average event is not biased towards one kind of phenomena, brain will never say that event has occurred. So if you receive a large number of I mean, constructive interference and a large number of uh, destructive interference during the time of observation where you create the perception because our brain takes some time to create the perception, then only the idea of interference will be you know perceived by the brain and because it is happening both ways so you will brain will say there is no interference that's why i said interference is one thing which happens all the time because interference simply means superposition where which is happening anyway in nature all the time we never talk about the interference of it we talk about the sustainable interference of the way is it <clears throat> interfering in one particular fashion is there any finite pattern to it until there is no finite pattern, until there is no uh, fixed way of interference, we never call that interference because at the end, it is about the visual perception. Okay. And brain will have its own way of working. So that's why we talk about the sustained interference. So the rule for interference is the interference of two way will create the sustainable interference pattern only when Only when? So for sustained interference, okay, I can type also because now I have a keyboard. Just. Or, or, or sustained interference, the two waves arriving at a point must have constant <coughs> Phase difference over large interval of time and okay, I can continue there. And this is only possible when the two waves. will have <laughs> same frequency. It means if they emit the wave at a similar interval, then only it will arrive at point P in a similar interval and then only the phase difference will be similar or constant. <clears throat> but is that sufficient? The question is, is it sufficient condition? The answer is no, it is not sufficient. Okay. Yes.
Now we talk about the wave arriving at a point uh, having same frequency, but who will create such a wave? It is the source. Okay. So two source <clears throat> which maintain the constant phase relationship with each other and having same frequency will create such wave. Once again, two source which maintain the phase constant phase relationship <clears throat> and having same frequency will create such wave. Such source we call coherent source. Okay. So what I what we talked about just now was the wave. The for sustained interference, the two wave arriving at a point must have constant phase difference over large interval time, and this is only possible when the two wave will have same frequency. Now the question is, who is going to create it? It is the source. So it means the source must have a similar relationship, <coughs> and in physics, such sources are called coherent source okay mm -hmm. so we say that <clears throat> oh okay the two sources must be coherent the two sources must be coherent so I'll talk about coherency. What is coherence? Okay, let me talk about coherent first. Okay. So two sources must be coherent. That is the two sources. The two sources must be coherent. That is the two sources. must be the two sources must be having constant phase difference over large interval of time okay so we'll talk about what is coherent uh, coherence so coherence is a simple term which means the coordinated the coordinated oscillation of wave is called coherence. So source which produce wave which oscillate in <coughs> predictable fashion or you can say if the two wave can have a predictable phase relationship if you can predict the phase relationship between them then we call they are coherent source so you can take uh, this example let's say if you have seen uh, in a stadium there is something called human wave okay so they stand up they sit down and it happens in such a nice fashion it looks like human wave in a stadium have you seen this <coughs> human wave Sir, as in like uh, sometimes we see that sequentially the people like yeah 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 react. correct yes. so you, you can imagine okay there is some uh, some uh, annual day function happening in school in which uh, uh, small kids are holding their hand and one is raising the hand other is falling the hand and there is a wave like pattern of hand movement right okay. yes sir so when it happens in coordination in a proper coordination or sync then we know that if the first guy has raised the hand then second will let it down so we can predict who will do what accordingly right yes so knowing the face of the first guy can let you predict the face of the next guy or the next guy or the next guy 
So in a way, over the distance, the phase relationship can be established without any ambiguity, or at least roughly <clears throat> to an extent which is acceptable. So we say that if two waves are coherent, then there exists a predictable phase relationship. Okay. And why it is important, I'll come to that. So this is called coherence. So similarly, have, we have coherent source. So what is coherent source? Two sources. the wave produced by source and have predictable phase relationship then we call such source as coherent source. So it means the source is producing the wave not haphazardly but rather in some sustainable fashion and that is why that is allowing us to make a phase relationship. So, like individually, individually, we're, yeah, we're yeah. not considering it like relative, right, right, right. And for two sources to be coherent, their individual behavior must be constant. So, let's say if your behavior is fixed and if my behavior is fixed, then the difference will be fixed, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, so it is not required that we must have the same way of producing wave what is required is that the way you produce the way other source produce if the two sources are producing in a similar fashion at same interval then by default the two wave will have constant phase difference i'm saying that you will have your own phase i mean uh, every source will have its own uh, phase because <clears throat> when i'm creating the crest you might be creating a trough at that instant or vice versa. But the way you're creating, the way I'm creating, if that is maintained throughout at a same interval with same frequency, then <clears throat> whatever phase difference we can see in the beginning, the same difference we will see at the end also. Yes. So phase difference is important. Phase is not important. So the two sources can have different phase but the two sources must have constant phase difference for the sources to be called coherent with each other. Okay. Now, <clears throat> there's a problem with the light source. Light source emit wave in a discrete order. So how waves are emitted by source of light. So we know that if we have a if we have an atom, if we have an atom, <laughs> we know that when electron will transit from the high energy orbit to the low energy orbit, then it will emit the wave. Correct. So it is the transition of electron which creates the wave, isn't it? Yes. Now, when you excite an electron from the ground state to the high energy state, it will be there only for 10 to the power minus 8 seconds. It is called the lifetime. So an excited, an excited <laughs> electron will have lifetime of <coughs> so
So after that time, it will come back to the ground state. So at a scale that we understand, it is instantaneous process, right? So when we excite an atom, it will de-excite itself in no time. And as a result of de-excitation, an electromagnetic wave will be emitted. So when we have two orbits of any atom <laughs> and there is a transition from the high to low, it will emit the wave as a photon. So the wave emitted by the atom is not continuously. There is a gap of 10 to the power minus 8 seconds. Do you realize this? Yes. Okay. So one wave burst, if a single, if you talk about the single wave burst, it will look like something like this. This is called single wave burst. <laughs> And, and then the excitation and the excitation. Correct. So in in see because for next excitation it will take some time. So yes. now there is a discontinuity of emission. There is a discontinuity yes. of emission. If you go to any any uh, coffee machine uh, which dispenses coffee or tea, it cannot keep on dispensing forever. It will stop it and then you have to refill and then uh, restart the filling of a cup right yes so how it comes like you press the button it will dispense coffee for a certain volume it will stop then you have to repress it for the next part isn't it yes so even if you keep on pressing it it will not keep on emitting it isn't it yes sir. okay so same thing happens there also. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So the idea is the real light source. Now this is the one atom. This is one atom I'm talking about. But in a source, how many atoms we will have? <laughs> Infinite atoms, right? Yes, sir. So a real source of light will have infinite atom and this infinite atom will get excite and de-excite. So you will get a bundle of photon, not single photon, right? So this bundle of photon is called a wave train. So you create a one bundle, then you create the next bundle, then you create a next bundle. So in reality, uh, a real source will emit light something like this then there's a gap so this is called breaking okay so you create a next batch now the gap is not visible at all okay this is not visible and you can also see <clears throat> if i just uh, if i just zoom one of them so it is like something here it will have constant sinusoidal behavior for some time. So this sinusoidal behavior is, okay, I'm just uh, exerting it and this will again die down like this. So generally we don't represent uh, this nice oscillation part. We simply represent something like this. So basically it is, So for some time it is almost constant, right? Yes, sir. And then it will die out. So what we can see that because of this, the burst nature, because every wave you can only emit for 10 to the power minus eight seconds. So the wave in this packet and the wave in this packet are not related. Because there is a breaking of, you know, this, this is breaking the phase. It is not the same group that we are oscillating. It is the, you can say, discrete group which we are oscillating. Therefore, one packet cannot have phase relationship with another packet. And that is for many reasons. First of all, we have no idea in which plane the wave is oscillating. So the first packet may be oscillating like this plane. 
the other packet may be oscillating in this plane the other may be oscillating in this plane so this concept of polarization and the wave emitted can have any plane and therefore for interference to take place it is necessary that the two wave must have same plane of polarization they must be oscillating in the same plane isn't it yes because if they are not in the same plane then they will not interfere then we cannot add it the way we add it yes because if they are let's say in different plane then they will have some component some component will add some component will not add okay and if they are in the mutually perpendicular plane then they will never add okay because there is no component of one into other direction yes. so <clears throat> the reality of interference is very complex but we should not go in, in deep detail of those complexity so we call that <clears throat> only over a finite length so let's say everyone born in 10 to the power minus 8 second so if <clears throat> the two because in the actual source you you, you will have a, you will have you can say infinite atoms which will undergo infinite transition which will create infinite photon and those photon which are born almost together within 10 to the power minus 8 second will have some overlap okay <clears throat> so my photon let's say this much big and another one is born let's say one picosecond before another another you can say is born like this so this is the interfering range <clears throat> so if there is some overlap then they will interfere if there is no overlap they will never interfere understood so this is called 10 to the power minus 8 second you can say era this is an era actually this defines an era and whoever is born in that era will uh, will have a phase relationship will have similar plane of oscillation but the next era will have different plane and different phase relationship so interference of the two wave burst cannot take place only one can interfere with itself so if you can say this can interfere with this are we talking about a single photon i mean like a single electron uh, no, wave no, no, no. single photon is single transition of one electron and we talk about the you know combined photon effect so it's like a single means a cluster of photon coming together so you will not be able to distinguish the individual photon rather we we'll see a a oscillation a confined oscillation over a distance and in a single wave burst like all the yeah. all all the uh, yeah all excitation and the excitation taken together for the interval 10 to the power minus 8 second Yes, sir. sir and they will also be in the same plane they will also in the same plane sir yeah yeah they will have same plane because once they jump together so they are born in a similar fashion so that's why they will have same plane okay, okay. yes sir but every excitation and de excitation de excitation produces wave in different plane okay <clears throat> that is why such a wave we call unpolarized light such light which we call unpolarized because they don't have the plane of polarization they don't have the finite plane so it is like they can occupy whatever plane they want to okay so interference of light is bit tricky i mean event it is very difficult to make them interfere under any general condition we have to create a very specific condition for them to interfere and that is why we don't see everywhere interference we see only when we create that situation of or condition which is suitable for the them to interfere okay sir sir and that we do so by bringing all these bursts into the same plane yeah so what we do is we bring one burst and we break the burst into two pieces or two parts by making two holes or two slits so the same same burst will travel through the two different path and we will let them interfere 
so let's say it's a school picnic and uh, your class strength is let's say 100 so 100 cannot be put into one bus right yes so what we do is we put in two buses let's say and now these two two buses will go to the destination okay so you will be traveling in uh, two different lane of the road will reach at the spot and then again you will gel together yes sir. because you are from the same class no? so you know each other okay but yes. imagine imagine that you are in class uh, 12th and uh, there is a junior in class 6 okay and they are also coming in the uh, another bus you are going with the first bus second is coming in the other bus and your other bus <clears throat> is behind that bus, that guy okay somehow so before your bus will come who will come the class 6 student will come so will you interfere will you gel up in the same fashion no, the answer is no. I mean, you say, okay, you are junior, go away. Okay, so you, they will play with their own friends. So, <clears throat> for interference to take place, we take one generation and we let them interfere with each other. So, every time <clears throat> a wave from same generation interfere, although the wave arriving at the point P will not stop there. So, once you interfere, you are going away because the wave is constantly propagating. So they come at a point, they interfere, but they are also going away. They are getting reflected. So every time the point P will receive different wave front, isn't it? Yes. Every wave front is one generation. So at point P, you will get a generation, next generation, next generation. So interference is obtained for one generation. And then at next instant, the next generation will interfere with its own generation. At the next instant, the next generation will interfere with its own generation. What you see is infinite generation interference. Because as time will progress, the wave front will keep on coming there. And we make a situation so that every wave front will interfere in the same fashion. Okay. Yes. Okay, anyway, so this is too much detail. Although not required, we can <clears throat> go beyond uh, this explanation. But it's good to know. So there's something called coherence length. We write LCOH, coherence length. And uh, <clears throat> It is the length over which the two waves can interfere. That's it. You can just remember this. It is the length over which two waves can interfere. Okay. So it is like something like a okay up to what length the wave is spread out by virtue of the emission process okay because at one generation uh, let's say my photon is here someone photon is like this someone is like this as long as some common part is present the interference will happen now, but the actual is spread is from where to where? This is actually spread from here to here. Yes. And over this is spread, we have some common part. Yes. So this common part is called L coherence. The length over which we can have some interference. Yes. And this all thing we represent by single wave. So we don't represent like this. We represent single like because we don't see. So. <laughs> We do like this. So this is how we represent the okay. So it is really uh, complex, not very easy to understand. But there's something called coherence length. And similarly, we do have something called coherence time also. Okay, so we have coherence length and we have also have coherence time. Sir, 
so core is time is like how we define one generation yes it is like <clears throat> if you are born in let's say 2003 or 4 which year you born 4 5 6 sir 6 okay so i can say that as someone two year before and two year after will we almost of same generation yes so i can say that 2004 to 2008 is similar generation yes or no yes sir yeah so that is called the coherence time the time over which the wave are having the ability to interfere okay so in a way whoever is born out of de excitation process in an interval of 10 to the power minus 8 second we can call as coherence time understood yes sir so <clears throat> it is the time interval during which wave produce through source having capability to interfere with each other okay so <clears throat> so generally this is 10 power minus 8 second and uh, we, we know that we know that uh, the first photon which has left the source and the last photon which is about to leave the source in 10 to the power minus 8 second the maximum gap can be how much between the the two so if the light will travel with the, i mean if the wave will travel with the speed of light then the distance Will be c into t coherent, right? So if yes. I take c as three ten by eight, and if I take this minus eight, so you can see this is three meters. So ideally, over three meter of range, we can expect some sort of interference over three meter. Okay. Yes. So this is the expectation. Okay. Okay. But uh, the the thing is like uh, uh, it goes much beyond the JE level. So we have something called Fourier analysis, and uh, <clears throat> Fourier said that a wave burst will not have one wave; it will have a large number of wave, isn't it? And uh, the orbit, you know, excites you know excitation, you know the excitation. But let me tell you something more deeper. so when you have two orbits <laughs> and you say there is the de excitation of uh, electron and there is a emission of electromagnetic wave but what you don't know that even if you zoom this orbit you will see a large suborbit or you can say orbital and this you can zoom as you can also see there is a large so there is a tiny variation of wavelength of electron also so we don't know the let's say in the first atom you go from here to here in other time someone is going from here to here so again there are many possibilities therefore a wave burst will not have a unique wavelength rather it will have a wavelength lambda not which is called the mean wavelength and something called spread so the wavelength which will which you can see in that wave is lambda not minus delta lambda not two so a single a wave burst when you represent like this let's see when you represent something like this so it will have a lambda not and then there is a spread of lambda not so we don't have unique wavelength we have 
a spread of ml understood yeah. so this is like the basis for like the heisenberg's uncertainty yeah, principle yeah exactly so this is the heisenberg uncertainty principle actually we cannot measure the exact answer we can only measure the uh, roughly so this is the spread and <clears throat> fourier gave the formula that uh, the coherence length is actually equals to the mean wavelength is square upon the spread so james fourier was the person who developed the uh, mathematics behind the harmonics so he was able to see that any complex oscillation is basically combination of a, a simple sinusoidal oscillation <laughs> and uh, he developed this uh, relation for your relation that lesser the spread bigger the coherence okay yes no i won't say that i have really i can uh, cannot tell you okay i understand completely everything even for me also these are somewhat difficult thing okay and uh, yeah this you can derive it easily it's not very difficult to derive <laughs> so basically <laughs> l coherence is c into t c o h right yes, sir. and we know that uh, c equals to frequency into lambda Yes, sir. So C is constant, so we can define this as F equals to C by lambda. So D F the differential D F by D lambda is how much? Minus C by lambda square. Yes. <coughs> so D F is uh, minus C into D lambda by lambda square. and uh, df is called uh, bandwidth because it's a frequency difference so we call bandwidth and we can ignore the uh, sign we can at uh, delta lambda by lambda square and fourier basically he said that bandwidth is basically inverse of coherence time <laughs> so that's why we can say 1 by t c o h is c d lambda by lambda square therefore c into t o h uh, t coherence is lambda square by delta lambda and uh, by definition we call this as l coherence yes so anyway these are some definition by the fourier again which we can ignore okay <laughs> so we have gone too deeper uh, this is not much required but okay it will help us somewhere yes. so can i just come back in a minute yeah sure sure
Sir, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. So now uh, we'll talk about the phase relationship between the two wave. Okay. First, we'll understand the. I think we have discussed the phase difference between uh, uh, relation between phase difference and path difference. No. So let me relate first a relation between. Phase difference and path difference. For sinusoidal wave. So relation between phase difference and path difference for sinusoidal wave. Okay. So let's try to understand this. Every sinusoidal wave will have very predictable behavior or variation you can say, right? Yes. So if it is a sine wave, okay. Then this is zero. This is called lambda. This is two lambda. Correct? Yes. So lambda means what? The distance over which. <coughs> so if you begin at origin, then at lambda, it will restart in the same fashion as origin. So lambda is called the distance <coughs> at which the wave will perform similar oscillation. So any two point <laughs> which are oscillating in the same fashion, if you try to look at the separation, you will see it is either lambda, two lambda, three lambda, four lambda, and so on. Understood? Yes. So we simply see that uh, any two point on a medium having <laughs> separation multiple of lambda will oscillate in same phase, isn't it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So lambda is not a wavelength something. It's there is nothing like a wavelength. It's a definition which means uh, it is the minimum characteristic separation between the two points of a medium or a space at which a wave oscillates in same phase. That is the definition of lambda. Understood? So basically, yes. <clears throat> this definition is less uh, known to many. So we can write it here. So what is wavelength? It is the minimum characteristic separation between two points of space at which wave oscillate in same phase. That's it. <laughs> So for two wave to, uh, for two, you know, any two point at which the wave is oscillating in same phase, it means the phase difference is well known to us in advance. It must be integral multiple of lambda. Understood? So <clears throat> what happened? Is this clear what I'm saying? Like for the same wave. Yeah, for the same way. Yeah, of course. Okay. But if we, if we have a two identical source emitting in the same fashion, let's say if I'm uh, if I start emitting the wave <coughs> sinusoidally, and uh, if the other source is also emitting sinusoidally, so technically both are producing same wave because they have same frequency. Yes. Yeah. They also start at the same time with the same yes. phase. So if there is a zero phase difference between the source, <laughs> then the wave emitted by the two source will have same phase. Yes. Sir. Okay. If they travel same distance, they will have same phase. Okay. Yes. So, so we can say that if uh, <laughs> lambda is path difference, between 
two points then the phase difference of oscillation of wave at these two point must be 2 pi isn't it <laughs> because on a circular scale two arrows will match each other two arrows will match each other so let's say if i draw an arrow so if the arrow will match with each other <clears throat> only when it is exactly at 2 pi angle after this so if i if i turn 2 pi again i am back to the same arrow isn't it <laughs> so <clears throat> on a linear scale lambda is equivalent of uh, the angular difference of 2 pi and <laughs> the angular distance we call phase difference understood So basically phase difference comes from word phasor and phasor means a rotating vector. Okay. Yes. Sir. Okay. So we can say <coughs> lambda path difference is equivalent of 2 pi phase difference. Understood. So this is the relationship between path versus phase. So if you know the path separation, you can also guess the phase separation without doing actual calculation. You can just use the formula. So lambda path difference is equivalent of 2 pi phase difference. So unit path difference is equivalent of what? 2 pi by lambda phase. So if we know that two points are having a separation delta x, let's see if you know that two points having separation delta x, then the phase difference between these two points will be how much? Pi by lambda delta x. So <laughs> that is why We write delta phi, the phase difference of the two point having separation delta x, we can write as 2 pi by lambda delta x. <laughs> okay. Now, <clears throat> for two points to oscillate in same phase, the path difference must be <laughs> how much? For, to oscillate in the same phase to uh, lambda. But it could be any lambda, no? lambda, two lambda also? Yes, sir. So, if, and if, lambda. Yeah, if A is oscillating in phase with B, and if B is oscillating in phase with C, if C is oscillating in phase with D, so A, B, C, D, or any pair will oscillate in same phase, right? Yes, sir. So in general, it is N lambda. Where N belongs to 0, 1, 2. So 0 will not come for the same case. Uh, it means if we have parallel wave by two source, which is producing wave in the same fashion. So both are producing identical wave. Then if you reach a point P, then <clears throat> if the beginning is same, the end must be same. If you travel same, isn't it? Yes. If beginning same, then you can find the answer. But what happens 
if you travel different distances so they are producing the same way but they are producing <coughs> uh, reaching the point p by traveling different distance so basically there is a difference of the length yes sir okay so now what will be the condition that uh, at point p they interfere in in same phase what is the condition so this extra length this extra length this extra length must contain extra wavelength yes sir either 1 2 or 3 or integer number yes sir. because only then they can interfere in the same phase right because if you move by lambda ahead nothing will change right yes sir okay so let's say if i start from point p and if i uh, traverse back so i i come to know, know that this is 5 uh, lambda somehow let's say okay, okay. now if it, if if i move uh, if i move back and if i see that okay this is 7 lambda so i know that uh, <coughs> the wave arriving at the point p is in same phase isn't it Yes, because every extra lambda will not change the phase, right? Yes, sir. But if it is same lambda plus minus some fraction, that will change. Yes, sir. So <clears throat> for same phase, this is the condition. Delta x is in lambda. Therefore, delta phi will be how much? <laughs> delta phi by lambda into lambda. Which means? n pi it is 2 n pi right yes sir so if the phase difference is n times 2 pi <coughs> then it is having same phase it's the same thing yes sir okay for two points because these are very important points for two points to oscillate <coughs> in exactly opposite phase which means if the arrow is here the other arrow should be exactly opposite so it is possible when you when you are pi angle away or or how much Sir, three pi, sir. Three pi away, or seven pi. Yes, sir. So for two point to oscillate in exactly opposite phase, the delta x will be how much? Either lambda by two, <coughs> because on any oscillating wave, you can see if this is crest, this is crest. But if you move lambda by two away, you can see there is a trough. So yes. this is lambda by two. Do you realize this? <laughs> Yes. Two points at a separation of lambda by two will have opposite phase. So when we get the opposite phase, again lambda by two plus lambda. Then again lambda by two plus two lambda. So lambda by two plus n lambda will give you what? <coughs> so lambda by two plus n lambda will give you opposite phase. <coughs> yes. And this you can simplify as you can add this as n plus one by two lambda, or you can call this as odd multiple of half wavelength. It's the same thing. All are same way of writing. Understood? Yes. You can also subtract. So it is not necessary that uh, it must begin like this. Okay. The only difference is here the n will be set from zero, one, two. Okay. Some book or text will write this as two n minus one into half wavelength. In this case, n will start from one, two, three. That's it. This is the only difference. Okay. Yes. So these two extreme cases are important for us. The rest we can do it as and when required. Okay. so now now we'll talk about something very very important to us 
the property of light is that light or you can say wavelength <coughs> depends on medium you know but frequency depends on source <coughs> so for example if you beat a drum yes sir so how many times per second you beat the drum depends on whom you or the medium so that on us exactly that's why it is called that frequency depends on source the source means the person the agent who is disturbing the medium so agent will decide the frequency so source decides frequency clear yes sir but once the sound drum beat sound is produced it will travel through the air and will reach the audience yes sir so how quickly the audience will listen depends on source or the medium yes sir the medium sir so source will have no control over the the way the disturbance will travel through the medium right yes sir so that's why we call the wave velocity or wave speed depends on medium <coughs> okay yes yes and now comes the wave length which is very interesting so wave length is basically it is the distance traveled by the wave exactly in one time period of disturbance so if you are disturbing frequently so there is a gap right and in that gap wherever the wave will travel that point and the new disturbance will oscillate in same phase right yes so what is wavelength <clears throat> it is the distance traveled by the wave in one time period of oscillation yes so wavelength depends on what <laughs> medium medium and source both why source because source will give you time interval yeah and oh, medium yes, will give you velocity yes sir that's why wavelength depends on both medium as well as source so if you enter a medium if you enter a medium the time period will remain same or will change the time period it won't change correct because it is source property yes sir but if you enter a medium in which you travel slower then your wavelength will decrease or increase sir it will decrease sir correct because your speed has come down no? yes sir so in the same time you will travel less so the next point which will oscillate in same phase will be closer to you yes so we say that wavelength <laughs> varies from one medium to another medium understood yes so if <clears throat> lambda not is wavelength <laughs> in air or vacuum because we both uh, we consider both as roughly same so lambda in air is roughly is basically less than but on a equal side it is very close to equal but on a lesser side then lambda in vacuum so it is equal but on a lesser side understood so lambda is maximum in vacuum because light speed is maximum in vacuum isn't it yes but at the moment you enter a medium if i have a some medium let's say let me draw a medium so if the disturbance in air is having this gap and the moment the disturbance will enter the medium so at the instant when you the first will enter the second will be here correct yes 
but once you slow down so while this will travel here this will travel somewhere here only yes so you can see the new gap is less no yes so how to get this new gap so we have to understand the uh, speed of light in a medium and every medium will have something called a refractive index so speed of light in the medium we write as c by mu because that is the definition of mu refractive index is c by v yes sir so v is how much <coughs> c by mu Yes. So lambda in a medium will be V into T lambda in air equals to C into T. Simple because T is same for both cases. Yes. So lambda medium by lambda air or vacuum will be V by C. Yes, sir. But uh, V by C is called 1 by mu. Yes. So lambda in a medium is lambda in air upon mu. Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is the first thing you need to remember. Okay. So that is why I said that you should watch the uh, ray optics. These are things explained there. And because I haven't explained for you, that's why I'm explaining here. Okay. <laughs> I started watching the optics. Ah, great. So you can take it, I mean, take your time. Uh, it will take you uh, at least three, four days to finish. So oh. content wise, it is not much, but uh, uh, I have covered the J mains portion also, the defects of vision, uh, optical instrument, everything I have covered there. Oh, please. Yes. Yeah. So now we are going to talk about something really serious and interesting and that's called the optical path length. And uh, geometrical path length. And the relationship between them and why this relationship is important we also come to know okay yes sir. okay so imagine <coughs> imagine a bus in bus if you look at a passenger they you know they're having a sitting arrangement and it will have two seater bus or maybe three seater bus or maybe three and two three by two it's called three by two Two by two, which means two by two, two seat this side, two other side. So most of the you know uh, buses, depending on the size, will be two by two or three by two. Okay. So imagine you are hosting grand birthday party for your all school friends. So you book a bus for them. So you say that you all will come to our destination. So you book a bus. So. <coughs> So your friend is arriving at your home and then they get into bus and you're going to some destination, some resort where all your friends will celebrate your birthday together. So you can see the size of the bus. So to throw the party, the space required is in reality in the resort will be same as the size of the bus or bigger than bus or much bigger than bus. <laughs> It should, be, it should be much bigger, right? So let's yes. say if you if you want that, okay, they all should be sitting uh, on a dining table. <coughs> then you need more space. Okay, it is like in bus, they are compactly, you know, put. But the moment they come out, they spread out. So they occupy large space, isn't it? Yes. Similarly, if a wave is in a medium, it is shrinking inside the medium. Yes, sir. But at the moment they come out, they again stretch out, they become big. Yes. So <clears throat> the German or the optical path length talks about the count of the number of wavelengths 
that is being stored there and what if those waves are put in vacuum how much space we need to put the same number in a vacuum so the space equivalent which we need to put the same count of wavelength in a vacuum or air we call geometrical uh, we call optical path lengths so optical path length will tell you that how many wave uh, or can say the length over which those number of wave can be stored in vacuum that's it so a medium will have its own length which we call geometrical length <laughs> So imagine we have a medium <coughs> having geometrically t length longer. Okay. Now tell me how many wavelengths we can store in this length T. Let's say we are putting along the length. So number of wavelengths, <coughs> number of wavelength in T length of medium. Equals to how much? T by lambda medium? Yes. So, if the same number, let's call N. Let's call N. So, how much space we need in vacuum to store the same wavelength, same count? Lambda n into lambda naught. So optical path length is defined as n into lambda naught. The count into lambda naught. Same person now put into vacuum. Yes. Sir. So if one person will occupy lambda naught, then n person will occupy <coughs> n lambda. So we can write as optical path length equals to uh, t by <coughs> lambda medium into lambda naught yes sir so this is simple answer it is so this is mu times t it's a really big it is big by mu times right yes so actually a t length of a medium is equivalent of mu t length of air so t length of medium is mu t is equivalent of so i'm saying equivalent means the number of wave they, they keep okay and why this count is important because to find the phase relation we need to see the or check the difference in number of wavelengths right yes. so for proper comparison of the count difference 
we have to convert everything into air equivalent okay because that will give you easy way to make the differences okay so you can see that a t length of a medium is mu t length of air equivalent right yes okay so you are able to hear me yeah yeah i can hear okay so t length of medium is equivalent of mu t length of air or vacuum i hope this is clear yes good okay. now there is other way of round or other way of thinking method 2 so let's say if a light ray is traveling through the medium of refractive index t uh, of mu and thickness t so <clears throat> let let t be the time <laughs> taken by the wave to cross the medium so c is equal to t by v correct yes because the in the medium the speed will be v right yes so <clears throat> equivalent a distance and that equivalent okay so optical path length is defined as equivalent distance travel by light <coughs> in vacuum for interval of t seconds so how much will travel c into t <coughs> and c into t is how much t by v yes. and by definition A speed of light in vacuum upon medium is called a refractive index. Yes. So basically, the time you take to cross a medium, if I allow you to travel for the same time in a vacuum, then whatever you travel is the optical path length. Okay. It is clear. Yes, sir. So every question that we are going to solve, <laughs> we are going to solve in. optical path length manner and that is why <coughs> in a, a wave optics in a wave optics <coughs> the phase difference <coughs> is not equals to 2 pi by lambda delta x rather it is 2 pi by lambda delta x opl basically it's optical path difference opd actually so it is the optical path length difference okay so let us the formula we have to modify we have to write 2 pi by lambda air so we always write lambda air into optical path difference so geometrical path reference we never consider we only consider the optical path reference because that will give you the difference of count of wavelength and that is why you can exactly relate the phase relation so this is the big difference from the 
actual phase the phase relationship for the point so for air both will be same because for air if there is a vacuum or air then the geometrical path difference will be same as optical path difference right yes because mu for air for air mu is one right yes sir so it is 1.00 something mu uh, something is for air uh, and for vacuum it is perfectly one so although there is a difference but that is uh, is small enough to be ignored so for air or vacuum <coughs> the optical path difference will be same as geometrical path difference is this clear yes sir so in every calculation if the medium is not air we have to convert into air equivalent medium understood So both the waves will be present in the same medium only, right, sir? No. Look at this. Imagine we have two source. <clears throat> now we'll talk about the two source, S1, S2. And it is D above and D below. And the wave is arriving from source 1 and source 2 at the angle bisector. So are they same geometrically, yes or no? Sir, yes. But are they containing the same number of wavelengths, yes or no? Same number of wavelengths, yes sir. Are they containing same number of wavelengths? Oh, no sir, the D is same, so they will be containing different number of wavelengths. Because the size is small in below? Yes sir. And more above? Yes sir. So basically there is a wavelength count difference? Yes, sir. So there may be phase difference also. Yes, sir. Because they have different count of wavelength. So <laughs> they will have different phase difference also, no? Yes, sir. So the interference at a such point will have very different behavior. Yes, sir. So that's why the geometrical path length or path difference never gives the right idea of phase relation. Okay. So we, we have to convert this into, so if this is, let's say, our distance, and if the refractive index of uh, water is mu, can we say this distance is mu r in length? Yes, sir. The air equivalent. So now we can know the, what is the optical path difference, OPD? Sir, which mu r minus r. Correct? Yes, sir. So now we can add to the phase difference will be how much? Two <laughs> pi lambda into mu r minus yeah mu minus one yes. Understood. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So that is why I said <clears throat> phase relationship can only be written if you know the optical path difference. Geometrical will never give you the right idea. Sir, and if both source one and source two are present in water medium, then still we'll be considering it an air equivalent and consider optical path difference. Yeah, I mean, there are two ways. <clears throat> if everything is in the same medium, if everything is in the same medium, okay, then yes. convert everything in the same medium. It means take lambda of that medium, take delta x geometrically, and you'll get the answer. Okay, sir. It means things will change like this. You will add. <coughs> so if I create a, a situation in which everything is in the same medium. So let's say the two sources arriving at a point. So now everything is in the same medium. So we have a choice. There are two ways of solving. The first is, <laughs> if I call this length as L1, if you call this length geometrically as L2, okay, <clears throat> then the, if this is the geometrical length, then optical length is how much? So there are two ways of writing. The, so now the wavelength outside is lambda and this will be lambda? Yes, sir. So you can add phase difference equals to 2 pi by lambda into delta L. 
और एज आई सेड टू पाई बाय लैमडा नॉट इनटू म्यू टाइम्स डेल्टा एल अगेन गेट कन्वर्टेड टू द सेम एक्जेक्टली so this is always true this is conditional and so there is a chance that you may come across situation in which this will fail okay. when it will fail like this situation yes so if you put everything into the same medium then either use the lambda of that medium and solve the question and take geometrical length or convert everything into optical and think as a equivalent Yes. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. So you have to be very careful. Okay, sir. Okay. So optical path length is the best way to undergo, right? Yes, sir. So <clears throat> you may come across question something like this. Very simple question. If uh, if there is a thickness of air, <laughs> and if we have t thickness of a medium. If the number of wavelength here is n not, but the number of wavelength here is n. Okay. <clears throat> so who will contain more number of wavelength? Sir n. Okay. Find mu of medium. Solve it. Okay. Sir, n by n naught. Yeah. So of course, n naught will be t by lambda naught. Yes. Sir. And n will be t by lambda. Yes. So, n by n naught is lambda naught lambda by, by lambda. This is mu. So that's the simple yeah. answer. The The mu represents the ratio of count of wavelength, right? Yes. So this is also a question. I thought it was asked in JE long time back. <coughs> okay. So now you have understood the meaning of phase difference, uh, optical path difference. Yes. Now you may come across a very uh, difficult situation in which. the medium having variable refractive index so what is the optical path length of this medium sir we do by integrating correct so you can cut an elementary write the optical path length called d 
एक्स ओ पी एल इक्व टू म्यू नॉट एक्स डी एक्स सो यू कैन सिंपली मूव एक्स कट डी एक्स सो फॉर दिस लोकेशन द म्यू इज म्यू नॉट एक्स Yes. So the optical path length will be mu of that location into geometrical path length, which is dx. Yes. So the optical path length will be the answer is very nice. Mu not l square by two. Yes. So variable mu. OPL calculation. So you can also come across question in which the mu is variable and you are supposed to find the optical path length. In that scenario, you have to do the integration, which is fairly simple. You can do it. Yes. Okay. Now, so let's say we have two source. Okay. <coughs> and the interference is happening at a point through reflection okay so sometime what happens <coughs> for interference there are two ways we need either you bring two source or the trick is don't bring two source take on just only one source okay and take a point p so the light will come from here to here directly right yes. and what we do is we bring a mirror into picture so you just bring some random mirror and light can come to point p also through reflection isn't it yes so let's say this is <coughs> L, this is L one and this is L two, and because it's a vacuum, it's a air. We can fairly we can write the path difference. Optical and geometrical will be same. So we can write the delta x is how much? L one plus L two minus L. Yes. And we can think of okay, getting the phase difference by writing two pi by lambda into delta x. Yes. But the problem is this will become wrong. you know why because the reflection can also affect the phase <laughs> okay so imagine a situation so if a wave is coming like this after reflection it may go like this so the crest will become trough and trough will become crest yes so reflection will actually shift reflection will actually shift the wave by lambda by 2 you can think of shifting either ahead or below doesn't matter but the reflection will convert crest into trough and vice versa that's why we say a reflection of wave suffers a Path difference of lambda two or phase difference of pi. Understood what I'm saying? Yes. So we can call phase shift due to <coughs> reflection. Phase shift due to reflection. <coughs> Phase shift due to reflection. So remember, there are two possibilities: reflection by denser medium 
or by fixed support. So either it is denser medium or it is fixed support. Fixed means like you can say mirror. I'll, I'll just try to buy mirror. We'll change the face. By pi, or will <clears throat> shift the shift the wave by lambda by two. So the way to solve question is. That the source will start the light. So this is the geometrical path reference. <laughs> so we have to always, you know, cover for the phase shift by virtue of reflection. The simplest way to do so is. So how many reflection this light will suffer? The reflected reaching at point P. Only one reflection. Yes. So what we do is we. Add lambda by two to the entire value of geometrical length. Okay, so you travel L one, then you travel lambda by two, and then you travel L two. So you can add lambda by two to either L one or L two doesn't matter. Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes. So it is good to add to the first one. So just write plus lambda by two, and then. Once you add lambda two, the effects of reflection is taken here actually. Now the difficulty come in scenario like this, <clears throat> which you have to be very careful. So if I create a <coughs> layer of media, layer of media. So let's say surrounding is there. <clears throat> if I show you something like this, if some light is coming here and going here, the reflection is happening. So you're coming from air and hitting the denser medium, right? Yes. The phase will shift by lambda. Oh, sorry, the path will shift by. So the geometrical length will have a increment of lambda. So we compensate for the reflection event by adding lambda two to the path. Okay. Oh, geez. If a light is getting reflected from here, so you're going from one point five to one point six. Understood. So now imagine light is coming this way. Then, then, then. So what will happen here? Again, the phase will shift by. <laughs> now the question is, the phase will it shift during? refraction the answer is refraction never shifts the phase or transmission never shifts the phase only reflection shifts the phase yes and of course there is a theory for that you will study in the wave and sound chapters okay, okay. so <clears throat> because you are getting reflected by the denser medium denser means the medium in which you move slowly is called denser. The medium in which you move faster is called rarer medium. 
so the density means is speed density not the density in terms of physical density is this clear yes sir so if a sound wave is coming and if sound is moving through the water through the air through the steel which medium is the rare medium for sound Sorry. or rarest medium steel because the sound travel fastest in steel so it is the rarest medium and the uh, air is the densest medium yes sir okay and vacuum is so dense that it, it can't move at all yes sir now here again the phase will shift and lambda wide but this is a situation which is unique what about this reflection you are hitting a boundary but boundary is you are coming from denser you hitting the rarer boundary right yes sir no shift clear sir, and in case sir. of yeah in case of mirror yes sir. always add lambda yes sir so <clears throat> there are three types of you can say there are three factors which can contribute to the phase difference okay so factors that contribute in phase difference calculation first optical path difference so if there is a difference optical path difference between the two wave arriving at a point p that will contribute to the phase difference a reflection by an interface if a light is getting back after hitting an interface then it can or it cannot it may or may not suffer the phase shift depending whether the other medium is rarer or denser optically right yes third is which i never talked about <laughs> it is quite possible that if two sources are not identical the source itself may have the phase difference so if two source if two sources are having phase difference it's a you can imagine this way okay so we normally call that uh, now you can understand like husband and wife are always having some phase difference right they are they do not agree to everything right yes generally so you might have seen your dad or mom having some differences in some opinion right yes sir. but they live together with that difference in harmony yes sir you know why because they are coherent sources they maintain the difference throughout so it is now well understood by each other like uh, how they will behave in situation because you know the phase difference is constant difference is there but that is constant and so the difference is understood by both of them so in a way they respect each other difference opinion difference of opinion so that's called the coherent source 
So source may have difference, but if the difference is maintained, then uh, interference will happen. And that difference will also add to the difference of phase. So look at this scenario. So I will take again the same example. <clears throat> so let's say we have air everywhere. We have two identical or no, not identical source. Now, looking at the geometry, <laughs> you may get confused that uh, the wave arriving from S1 and S2 will travel same distance. So the path difference is how much? So delta X is how much? So delta phi, you, you may expect it will be zero. Right? <laughs> The same waves are not. It is only possible when the sources are identical without any internal differences. Now imagine the source are having exactly opposite nature. So when S1 will create the trough, a crest, S2 will create the trough. And crest and trough will travel together, will reach here. And you can see there is a phase difference. How much? Phi. Yes. So this difference is coming because of a source difference, right? Yes. So path is not offering any difference, but the source itself is offering a difference. So when you calculate the <clears throat> when you calculate the path, uh, when you calculate the phase difference. Uh, for interference, you have to you have to take care of all three factors actually. Understood? You have to cal calculate the all three factors. Yes, sir. Now there is a concept of who will lead, who will lag. Okay. Who will lead and who will lag? Look at this. The meaning of lead and lag. Imagine we have two source S one S two. So for interfering at a point, they must arrive at the same place at the same time. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so they must arrive at the same time. So imagine there are two friends who decide to meet at a MACD. P is the MACD. So who has to leave the house first? Assuming they will travel through the same means. S2, sir. So S2 will lead actually. The one who starts the way first is called leading. Because to travel and arrive at the same point at the same time, the farther will leave first and closer will leave later on. Understood? Yes, sir. So we say that S2 will lead S1 due to path difference. Okay. Now, if I say that S2 as a source lags behind S1 by <coughs> pi by 6, this is due to some reason, there is a phase difference of S1 and S2 at the source end, 
near the source only there is a difference and who is leading now s1s so the phase difference if i want to write a, uh, let's say how to write the uh, the total effective path difference so the delta x if i write x2 minus x1 okay or if i write the phase difference so the phase difference due to path difference, we know the answer two pi by lambda into L two minus L one, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And the delta phi will represent what? Sir, the delta phi. Phi two minus phi one or phi one minus phi two? Which one? Two minus one or one minus two? Um, sir, with respect to only the first situation where S two will lead S one. Yeah, I mean, with respect to the path difference, the two is ahead, right? Yes, sir. So two is ahead by one. So we can say the two is ahead by one by this value by virtue of, correct? Yes, sir. But I'm saying that uh, the phi two is uh, phi one minus pi by six. Understood. So phi two minus phi one is how much? Because see, S two lags behind S one by pi by six. Yes. So phi two minus phi one is also minus pi by six. Yes. So basically, we have two equation. Now phi two minus phi one is two pi by lambda into L two minus L one. Also, phi two minus phi one is also. Minus five yes, sir. So we have this also, we have this also. So to, to get the net, we don't add, we just call net. We have to add this to mentally. So the net difference is how much? So the net difference is the difference. And why is this minus? Because in one side you're leading, but on the other side you're lagging actually, right? Yes, sir. So phi two was leading phi one due to the path re, uh, path relation, but at the same time it was lagging also by pi by six. So the net phase difference will change. Understood? Yes. So phase difference calculation is really tricky. It's not very easy. And what I have explained is uh, something which you need up to the Olympiad level problem. Okay. So generally. Okay. If you look at the question, the typical question will not consider the the phase relation of a source. They will be mostly based on the optical path reference. So you are going to face uh, almost hundred percent question of SCR mark will have the optical path reference. I'll share some uh, sheet. So in the resonance sheet, you'll get one or two question in which the difference of source will also be discussed. Understood. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, sir. yeah, tell me. Sir, when we say S2 lags behind S1 by pi by 6, I'm getting the ring of the net phase difference. So why? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. So S2 lags behind, it is given. It like question will be given to you that two sources, S1 and S2, uh, are located in such a okay, located and uh, they're creating the interference pattern. And they will also mention separately that the, the source itself having the phase difference of pi by six. I mean, the context of question will be very much clear, not confusing like this. Because P is the point which I have taken, right? Yes, sir. But in the question, P will not be given to you. Yes, sir. They will tell you find the interference pattern on the screen. Yes, so sir. you will choose the point P on the screen to find the phase relation and all. So if they have mentioned the phase relation in the beginning, it means it is for the source only, right? Yes. Sir. Because they haven't, you know, uh, derived any formula for the interference. They are saying in the beginning for the source itself. So it means it is for the source only. And the path is something which you calculate. 
it will not be part of question understood yes sir so you have to take care of three things reflection the optical the medium and uh, <clears throat> the source path reference itself okay okay yes sir and if you have understood all these thing then the chapter is over because now is only questions okay. <clears throat> okay. so now okay. what is this mm -hmm. I think we are done with the basic. Okay, so I started somewhere. Okay, I, I went to some different thing. Uh, condition for sustained interference, right? And I forgot the condition. Eh? The condition, yeah. So I write the first condition, second condition. Uh, let me mention the third condition here itself. The wave must be plane polarized. Which means the wave must be oscillating in the so waves alertic like this. So when you say plane polarization, it means it must have same plane of polarization or oscillation, you can say. So basically polarization means the oscillation will take place in one particular plane. Okay. And a plane polarization means they are having same plane of oscillation. Understood? Okay. So imagine they are dancers on the ground floor of a building and then dancers on the first floor and dancers on the second floor, will they ever interfere? Because they are not seeing each other, right? So dancers on every floor will not try to, uh, cannot sync with the other dancer, right? On the second floor, first floor, third floor, right? Uh, yes. So they have different plane. And that's why they cannot interfere. Yes. So only when they, they all are dancing on the same floor, they can see each other movement and interfere a bit. <laughs> okay. Yes. So interference is only possible for a wave oscillating in the same phase. So this was something which I missed. Okay. So too yeah, much. You had said like the components may interfere if they're not like. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So we never take care of those situations in which uh, the component and all. Okay, so we only say okay if it is plane polarized, there is an interference, and else we don't consider. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now in interference, uh, we, as I said, interference occurs at a point P. So we are only interested at those points where either maximum or minimum is going to occur. We are not going to talk about the in-between scenario. In-between will happen, of course. In-between, <laughs> we will have interference. In-between, we will have intensity. But we look for those points where the, the light <laughs> intensity is either maximum or minimum. So only two scenarios we'll talk about. So for constructive interference,
for constructive interference of two waves, the condition is on the phase, not on the path. Because we can see that uh, the phase can be affected by three factors, right? Reflection, path, and source relation, right? So when I say constructive interference of two waves, then we talk about phase only. So we said delta phi is equals to 2n pi. That's simple. n belongs to 0, 1, and so on. So we talk about the for destructive interference. So for destructive interference of two waves, the delta phi will be or the multiple of pi by two. <coughs> That's it. Understood? Yes. Sir. Okay. So if you remember these two conditions, you can get the answer. Now, <coughs> in situation when the source are identical, so that condition is removed, right? If there is no reflection, that condition is removed. In such question only, the optical path difference will matter, right? <coughs> and if you remove the medium also, then only geometrical path difference will matter, isn't it? Yes. So we can add complexity through adding reflection, adding, uh, bringing this different source, which is non-identical source theoretically. So in case of light, <clears throat> this will not happen. Uh, in sound, we do this actually. The source difference, we can bring two different source. Uh, in light, since <coughs> uh, we never create a two source by bringing two source, so that is not going to be possible. So I'll come to that. But theoretically, everything is possible. And for JEE advance, they can create such scenario as well. Okay. So now the biggest difficulty in creating interference is creating the coherent source actually. Because physical sources cannot be coherent. Because if, if you bring two tube light or two LED bulb, so both bulb will have infinite atoms. Yes, sir. Both bulb will have infinite atoms, right? Yes, sir. And in both bulb, those infinite atoms will undergo excitation and de-excitation. Yes, sir. And we know that even in a single source, <clears throat> interference is only possible for one generation. So is it possible to have interference of two sources? Can we talk about the phase of uh, one uh, photon and other photon from other source? Can we relate the phase relation between these two source? Sir, as an identifier. It is. It is like. Generation. Let's say it is like you are born as an Indian. Okay. And there is a person who born in Brazil. They have let's say different language, so you know only Tamil, and I mean let's say they know something only uh, some language of that uh, country. It is like they're born in different, not just generation, but they're born in different location, different eras, I mean, uh, different demography. So they cannot have the similar cultures. They're not identical at all. So they will never interfere, isn't it? Yes. Here, if you bring two physical source, two LED bulbs, then how the atom and when the atom will jump together, can we decide? No, sir. So excitation and de-excitations are random process. Yes, sir. So one random process can be cannot be in fact one random process cannot be related with another random process. Yes. So there is there is something symmetry in <clears throat> one of the process. So within one set of atoms, we have one generation of photons with some relation. Even in a single source, even in a single source, all wave bursts are not related, isn't it? Yes. 
So how it is possible to relate two separate source? Which simply means we cannot have interference by two physical source of light. Just yes. remember this. You cannot get it. So note two physical source of light. As in it's practically impossible, and we yeah, can make it No, no, this is practically impossible, and you will never make it happen. <laughs> the two physical so, source of light. I'm saying lights for sound, it is possible, but for light, it is not possible. So, for two physical source of light, cannot create interference. Understood. So two physical source cannot create interference. I hope this is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so the question is how to create coherent source of light. So there are two methods to create a coherent source of light. One is called the wave front division method. The first is called the wave front division method. <laughs> And under this method, we have multiple name that you will come across. So one is called the Young's double slit <coughs> experiment. In short, we call YDSE. Or you can also have Young's double hole experiment. So hole means round actually, okay, basically. And uh, slit is also hole. You can, I can say this is all. So slit means basically a rectangular hole. Understood? Yes. And a rectangular hole will make sure it's a line source. If you remember the last lecture, huh? Yes. Sir. Do, do you remember? Sir, yes, sir. A rectangular will be like linear with a very long length, but then a short yeah. width. Yeah, very, very, very short width. Yes, sir. Correct. <clears throat> so this is the wide uh, young double set, which is the famous name for the experiment. Okay. <clears throat> okay, sir. So what else we can have? There are many names actually. So we have Lyot's <coughs> single mirror method. If you remember, either you bring two source, so double slit means two source, or you bring the single source with a mirror. Okay. The other part is called Freshnell, Freshnell by Prism method. <laughs> the other part is called Freshnell, Freshnell's double mirror method. Okay. Then we have some uh, modification. <coughs> so by cutting and 
darkening of lenses. We can also create a cohen source. I'll show you. Okay. And there are many more. I can just call ETs. <laughs> so uh, I'll put it one more thing. So YDC can be have multiple, uh, you can say, variation. That's called the modified YDS. So we'll see that. And then let's call it this. The second, the second method The second method is called amplitude division method. So amplitude division means the incoming energy we reflect and refract. Again, we reflect and refract, and then we let them interfere. <coughs> So you split the energy and you recombine the energy. That's called the amplitude division method. So here we split the incident energy and again let them recombine. Because at the core of everything, we know that interference is what? The redistribution of energy, right? Yes. So every wave is energy, right? A wave is nothing but the flow of energy and uh, momentum, right? Yes. So <coughs> under this method, we will study thin film. Interference, which is our J syllabus, thin film interference, but we'll also study about the <coughs> air wedge or simply wedge uh, or air wedge. Air wedge. Liquid wedge. which will be Newton's rule. I'll just teach some part of it as per the requirement of JE. Uh, there are many more actually. Uh, it is. Okay. So all these things we'll start in the next lecture. So from next lecture, the, the life is very simple. We have to draw the diagram, find the path reference, write the phase difference, and you're done. So there is a, like a very typical routine job. You have to every time draw the diagram. Okay. Write the path reference. Convert into phase difference using all factor into consideration. And then write the condition for constructive interference and destructive interference. Continue this process till you get all the answer. Understood? Yes, sir. So that is what going to happen. Uh, from the next lecture onwards. So hopefully in the next two lectures, this chapter will be over. Okay. The next two lectures is about discussing all these types. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only question. Now, now theory is over. This much theory is, I have given you 20 times more than a book can be, like your textbook. Of course, yeah. I have studied from a book only, but uh, it's very vast. Nothing. Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll see in the next, next lecture. I'll try to keep one more lecture this week and then one lecture next week. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so sir. You have examination on what today, tomorrow? Sir, Sunday, sir. Sunday. So we'll keep it one before Sunday so that you can solve the basic question. Okay. okay sir. And yes, your sir. question is school question will be the the most basic question. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, bye and take care. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir.